Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I'd like to welcome you here today. My name is Andy Grossman. I'm the Senior Associate AD for Communications. And i uh, just like to thank you all for being here. We really appreciate it. Just a couple things before we get started. If you please remember to silence your phones so we don't have any disruptions. We will hear from uh, our president, Dr. Whitfield, and our new director of athletics, Eric Harper. After Eric's done with his remarks, we'll take questions. If we can keep those questions uh, from the media only, we'd appreciate that. And then after the questions, there'll be a photo opportunity right up here to my right. So now that we got that out of the way, I'd like to welcome our president, Keith E. Whit Keith E. Whitfield. Well, good morning. good morning. Oh, that wasn't bad. That wasn't bad. It is so good to be here with you this morning. And it's an important time for the university. So much has changed. The pandemic is changing our lives. Uh, our economy is changing. There's lots of things changing that our university responds to by producing some of the best graduates in the country. But it's not only an important time for our students, for our university, for our community, it's also an important time for our athletic program. We've spent the last four months working very diligently to identify the next leader of UNLV athletics. Our goal was to have the search completed by the first of the year because we knew the landscape of college athletics continues to evolve and we have lots of work to do to ensure we're strategically positioned to be competitive. I can tell you what that means is that I had a shortened Christmas break, so um, I'd like to first, though, thank the search committee, which worked very hard over those four months. I want to thank them for all of the work that they did, but I want to give a special thanks to Ricky McCurry, our VP for uh, Philanthropy and Alumni Relations, because he helped to shepherd this process through, and the process went very, very well. Uh, I will say that um, we went through a national search process, with a very, very open mind. We were curious what people outside the market knew about UNLV and who would be interested in leading Rebel Athletics. We had lots of great candidates apply. It made the job very tough but good. It told us a lot about where we're at in terms of being a program and being a city that's going to be known and is known now for, for athletics and sports competition. We had people from all over the country apply for our job in our pool, including individuals from Power Five conferences. But at the end of the day, we went with somebody very familiar with UNLV and very familiar with Las Vegas. Many of you know Eric Harper. He's been with UNLV athletics in various roles for nearly a decade and in, the college, of, and in college athletics for more than 30 years. His resume includes experiences at Power Five conferences, including the Pac-12 and Big 12. He's been involved in fundraising, compliance, leadership and administration, strategic planning and community engagement. But beyond that, he's vested in this community. He's vested in UNLV. He's terrific at building partnerships and great at strengthening existing relationships. He serves on the Las Vegas Bowl Committee and does volunteer work for nonprofits in our community. He's also very familiar with our UNLV coaches, staff, and boosters, and is familiar with the university as a whole. He provides a strong connection between UNLV athletics and the community and has a clear vision for our program going forward. For all of those reasons and more, we like that he's the right individual to lead UNAV Athletics. It's also not bad that since he's been here, he can hit the ground running since he's already been serving in that role and he knows the landscape very well. So with all of that, it's my distinct pleasure to formally introduce to you the new athletic director for UNLV, a familiar face at the university and in the community, Eric Harper, or as most of us know as Harp. Uh, 
Thank you, Dr. Whitfield. Wow, uh, this is exciting. <coughs> Get my specs out here. Hello, and thank you for being here today. I am so honored and grateful to be here. I feel so blessed to be standing before you this morning. <coughs> uh, I'm a crier, so <laughs> bear with me. Uh, my journey to this day has been filled with so much love and compassion. Uh, from family members, friends, uh, this day would have never been possible without the love and support of my parents, my entire family, eight brothers and sisters, 30 plus nieces and nephews, uncles, aunts, and cousins, large family from Texas. Um, so at this time, I'd like to express my gratitude to those who believed in me, supported me during my journey to this day. My lovely wife, Patrice, who is a UNLV grad, uh, undergrad, master's, and currently working on her doctorate. So officially, I am not uh, the most educated in our house. Uh, but I love my wife. I met her here at UNLV and just very excited about uh, her support and her love. And our kids, as we continue to push education, they chose to go to school today and hang out with their friends versus come and listen to dad speak. <laughs> So, but that's okay. That's okay. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Randall Cunningham, Pastor Cunningham, uh, obviously a former rebel here at UNLV. Uh, he's been a mentor and a support mechanism for me and also a counselor uh, in my 10 years here in, in Las Vegas. Mentors along the way, Jim Livengood, Bill Snyder, Max Urich, Bob Stoops, Chris Peterson, Greg Byrne, Steve Miller of the Agassi Foundation, Chris Del Delcani, Terry Toomey, and last but not least, my 11th grade English teacher, Kathy Dopa. <clears throat> and everyone that's ever said a kind word of encouragement on behalf of this journey. Before I go for any further, I have to say, President Whitfield, thank you for this incredible opportunity. I am so humbled to be a part of your team leading this great university. You are assembling a talented group of leaders that will do and already has done amazing things during the early part of your tenure. We will succeed because of your leadership, great vision, attitude, passion, and commitment to excellence for all of our students. Thank you. I'd also like to thank the Board of Regents, search committee led by Dr. Ricky McCurry and Todd Turner from Co Collegiate Sports Associates. I started this journey to become an athletic director in 1990 as an intern at Kansas State University, where I began to understand the value of true leadership from Steve Miller. I was told early in my profession, in this profession, by one of my mentors, be diverse in skill set, be diverse in thought, so you can be a more well-rounded administrator. I go back and I think about the leadership. I'm a servant leader that is humble, caring, and committed to excellence. As a department, we will serve our student athletes and coaches in the best possible way. As Simon Sinek says, true leadership is not about being in charge, it's about those in your charge. We will care for our staff, our student athletes, and our community, both campus and in the greater Las Vegas community. As Aristotle said, you are what you repeatedly do. Therefore, excellence ought to be a habit, not an act. Our staff will remain, will aim high to achieve excellence. We have more than over 500 student athletes, and I look forward to continuing my work every day to make their experiences great. We also have over 220 staff members and I'm extremely excited to continue working alongside each and every one of you to achieve greatness. We will have a culture of perseverance built on trust, empathy, compassion, care, growth, and accountability. We will have a championship culture that embraces a dedication to ensuring our student athletes graduate, win championships, and excel at all levels. Rebels make it happen. Go Rebels. Thank you. curious to know what you learned serving as interim athletics director and, and just the challenges that you guys overcome and, and everything you took away from that experience. You know, uh, it just reaffirmed why I got into this profession, and that's to help student athletes, you know, men and women grow uh, in, their, in, in whatever discipline that they have and whatever they want to do, but just grow as individuals. 
you know, sitting in the seat for the past four and a half months, it's been exciting, it's been challenging, but it's been fun. The love and support that I've received and our student athletes receive, student athletes receive on a daily basis from this community and this campus is absolutely overwhelming and just excited to, to lock in arms and continue to move forward together uh, as we drive this, uh, this program to consistent excellence in championships academically and athletically. Hi there, uh, Casey Harris, Las Vegas Sun. Um, I'm curious about uh, the goals the athletic department has um, under your vision in terms of, um, you know, increasing um, athletic budgets or perhaps um, something more along the lines of uh, goals for um, attendance or perhaps joining um, a, a larger uh, conference. I thought this was going to be some softball questions in this. You're coming at me hardcore with fastballs on the inside corner. Uh, primarily, the main thing we're going to do is, is uh, enhance our student athlete experience. That, that's first and foremost every single day in what we do. We're going to build a department that genuinely cares about everyone on campus, uh, all of our constituents. Our primary constituents is our student athletes, and that will not change. Uh, revenue generation, you mentioned revenue. We will do everything in our power in various different ways to be innovative and creative in generating revenue. And I'm sure before the end of the day, I will have asked somebody for some money to help our student athletes. That is absolutely 100% of what, we, what we're gonna do. We're gonna win championships and engage in our campus community uh, so in a way that it, it hasn't been done for a long time. And we want to make sure that we continue to build our brand, create a way that Everyone wants to be a part of UNLV, not come here to leave, come here to stay and be, become rooted in this community and just be a part of what we want to do every single day. And just continue to do what we do. We, when we, if we take care of our house, everything else takes care of itself. We will take care of our house. Hey, Eric, Chris Matthews at CBS here. I was just kind of wondering, now that we're a major sports city with the professional sports moving in, what are the bigger challenges you now face as an athletic director trying to get this program to where you want it to be, the programs to where you want them to be? Probably our biggest challenge is continue to try to build our relationships with those professional teams in, in the city, whether it's the Raiders, the Golden Knights, the Lights, the Aces, UFC, Aviators, building our relationship with them because if we can sit in a room and have a collaborative conversation and build and, and have our mindset to be thinking about the community of Las Vegas and not each individual winning in a, in a, in a battle. I think as one, uh, we can do great things. But if, we stay div if we're divided and in our own silos, then we can't. UNLV Athletics is 365, 24-7. We're here year round. We have, all the, we have 17 sports. We will be able to be in your face and building our brand every single day. The other sports uh, that are in Las Vegas, whether it's the Raiders or the Knights, they have their specific seasons, but we can be out there every single day. But we want to have great partnerships with the Raiders, with the Knights, with the Lights, with the Aces, with the Aviators, with UFC. We want to have great partnerships. And we can build those great partnerships. We can do great things as a community as one. Let me just follow up with a foot, uh, football question. Uh, I think five different head coaches in the last quarter century, nobody's had success with a football program here. What's your vision for that program? I like what Coach Arroyo is doing right now. You know, had five, game, eight, five games this year, by eight points or less. We'll win those games this coming year. He's built strong recruiting classes. I've been a part of a building foundation at Kansas State, part of building a foundation at, at University of Arizona when I was there as the director of football operations. And what it consistent, comes to is consistency in, in, in who our coaches are recruiting, consistency in who our coaches and how they're, they're training our young men uh, on the field, in the classrooms. When I say the classrooms, that's the video room where they're watching film. And so my vision with that is, is, is to lock arms with Coach Arroyo and help him make sure that he has everything he needs to be successful and he's on the right track. I believe he's on the right track to get that, get that done. And I'm excited about this coming year in 22. Uh, Brian Salmon, News 3 uh, here in Las Vegas. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, what does it mean to you to, to be the first, to be the first black man to be the AD here at UNLV? Um, obviously, to get the job, it's a wonderful thing, but obviously to, to, to blaze a trail and be an example. 
you know, I just look at it as being, being an individual that happens to be able to sit in this seat and lead an institutional uh, athletic department. That's what my focus is, black, white, green, red, orange, doesn't matter to me. We're all in this together. We're a very diverse institution, uh, and I'm just excited and happy about the opportunity to lead our athletic department. And, and really lastly for me, as far as uh, UNLV basketball, once the, the, the top program in all of the country, um, any specific um, ideas on, on bringing fans back and, and, and trying to get UNLV back to the top of the uh, mountaintop? Short of giving away, away tickets to get people in there, uh, we have an excellent coach in Kevin Kruger, excited about what he's doing, excited about what he's going to build. He has an amazing staff. He's had a great group of young men right now. As you can see last night with a 29-point win, they're excited about playing together. And they did that coming off of a COVID scare, okay? So that just tells you about the leadership of Kevin Kruger and, and his coaching staff and Coach Buckley and Coach Hartman and Coach Chappelle uh, and Deshaun Henry. Those guys, when you go to practice and watch, you see those guys loving playing together and excited about being around each other. And I'm excited about continuing to support Kevin, continue, continue to watch his team grow, and continue to watch him grow as, as a head coach. Really, really excited about Kevin Kruger. Steve Cofield, uh, ESPN Las Vegas. Hey, Steve. Uh, talking attendance, how important is it for you to get the students back and engaged at the, the big revenue sports, and what's the, the short-term game plan You know, once all the students are back to get them back out there? We, uh, we have worked uh, diligently over the last couple of weeks with Learfield and our marketing team, and we have some very targeted uh, promotional things that are getting ready to, to hit, the, hit the ground or hit the airways tomorrow, and one of those uh, a few of those, and, and hopefully Learfield, I'm, I'm not uh, causing any issues here, but uh, it's going to be some giveaways, some high-end giveaways for students, uh, electronically, travel-wise, uh, swag-wise, um, to get students to come out to the game. But we're going to push a lot of what we, we just saw last night to the students. We're going to go into the, the dormitories and, and get them here in the fraternities and sororities. And at the same time, just I believe it's today, we have a meeting with 60 RAs. So those 60 RAs on campus, we will be targeted to help, for, to get them to help us to get students to come out. If we gotta go over, if, if I gotta drive a cart over there and pick them up one by one, I'll have, I'll have no problem doing that. And I'm sure our staff will not, ha not have any problem doing that as well. But we wanna get our students back, because I was, a, uh, someone texted me today a YouTube uh, video, and it was from 2012. And the excitement in that video was unbelievable because it was the students singing rebels rebels it was really impactful and i was like you know what it's time to get back to that and kevin's doing a great job he's going to get us back to that but the individual that sent me that all he his his response back to me was the emoji of 100 because we're going to get it done <laughs>